just take a look at my last FM stats. I have listened to practically nothing but this album for the past week or so, so I think it's finally time that I talk about it. We're not gonna have any type of long intro on this one, let's just talk about the album straight away. From me to you, by Quad Echo, man, let's go. I'm like, where'd you go? Oh, oh, I came in a shit out of nowhere, yeah, I didn't mean to scare you, bro. Let's start off with the way this thing sounds, because my first couple listens of this project were definitely mostly sound oriented. This is an insane step up from Quad Echo's last project. Insane. Literally every time Quad Echo puts out new music, it makes his older releases harder to listen to, and I mean that in the best way possible. Voice memos? I don't want to play with you anymore. Not to completely discredit voice memos, I still do like that project, but the flaws within it became a lot more noticeable in retrospect as Quadeca quickly improved. So let's actually dive into From Me To You and talk about where this improvement is apparent. When it comes to the production and the sound of the album, it's kind of like if you take A Dream I Can't Remember, one of the best songs from voice memos, one of my personal favourites on there, and you take the sort of building, dramatic, explosive of production a song like that has and make it 20 times more interesting, glitchy, and hard-hitting, and you have something that's pretty close to the From Me To You sound. And that is 100% a good thing. Like I said, A Dream I Can't Remember is one of my favourites from Voice Memos, so I'm so happy that this project went in a similar direction with how punchy the instrumentals and the drops within them are. It's just that the ones on here are a million times more polished, creative, and layered. I just listened to tracks like Sisyphus and Burning Bridges slash Long Day, or even the interludes which just sound beautiful, Verglas made me ascend out of my body, and I can't even imagine how crazy the project files for these instrumentals look. So much of the production here sounded so incredible that it gave me chills, like I was standing at the top of a mountain. Shades of Us, the cinematic intro that was added to Alone Together, the outro of Summit Part 1, there were just so many moments on this album that sounded so powerful that I was just blown away and honestly felt quite moved. And almost all of this album was produced by Quad Echo himself, so the credit for the soundscape of this album almost entirely goes to him. I don't think there is a single track on this album that I dislike from a sound perspective. Maybe the only one I didn't really care for was Can't You See, because that one just felt a little too slow to me, but even then, the production on it itself is still pretty nice. I just have not been this excited and engaged listening to any other album this year so far. The only other album in my album of the year contenders list so far for this year is Tyron by Slow Tie, and for me personally, from me to you beats that. On my first listen, every time I was nearing the end of a song, I had no clue what the one after it was gonna sound like, because the sounds and styles on here do have a good amount of variety, while still keeping consistent elements between the tracks like the glitchy drums that add this really nice texture to the instrumentals. It really nailed the sound of everything sounding beautiful and polished, but also having this juxtapositional roughness and aggression to it. Another thing that caught me off guard with this project was how solid pretty much all of the singing is across it. When Quadeca is singing his heart out on It's All A Game, that shit goes crazy man. Smiling at the Ground has one of the catchiest hooks on the album too, that is the White Boy Summer anthem right there. Are we still doing White Boy Summer, is that still a thing? It's one of those songs that I just find myself singing to myself all the time without even noticing that I'm doing it. And honestly, even just the rapping itself sounded a lot more confident and self-assured than it did on voice memos. I can't understate how great it is to just hear the immense growth that Quadeca has had year to year as an artist. There is a lot of significant improvements here, but there is one area of the music, a relatively small area of it, that I feel like is lagging just a little bit behind. And that for me is certain parts of the songwriting. I feel like his production has evolved so much that there's almost a bit of an incongruence between the maturity of Quadeca's production and the maturity of some of the lyricism, particularly what I'm talking about is the punchlines on some of the harder songs. Don't get me wrong, I'm not referring to the implementation of the concept within the songwriting here because I really like the concept and the mountain climbing metaphors that are just laced throughout the album. Like Sisyphus is a great example where the lyricism matches the maturity of the sound. 
But it's mainly the simile reference punchlines that I feel like feel a little out of place on a project that is such an artistic step up for Quad Echo. There is still some wordplay that I enjoy and think is pretty smooth, like the whole baggage carry on thing that he did on Candles on Fire. That whole song is pretty solid lyrically. But it's more the one liners about anti vaxxers, Karens, and premium Snapchats that just take me out of the album a little bit for a second. For me to you is my favourite album of the year so far, so obviously this isn't like a glaringly major issue, it's just what I think is a potential future area of improvement. When it comes to the concept and the mountain theme, I definitely need a couple more lessons to fully dive into it and look for all the easter eggs and how everything ties together, but the lyrics that seem to be about a long distance relationship jumped out to me in particular on my first couple of lessons because, to paraphrase logic, I can relate. Like we can relate. I'm actually recording this video a couple days after my girlfriend went back to Canada, after spending six months with me here in Scotland, and now it feels like, you know, we're back on our own mountain climb, going through our personal journeys, until we reach the summit together again a couple months down the line. The climbing a mountain metaphor definitely seems to apply to more than one thing on the album. For example, on some tracks it seems like it's about progressing and growing as an artist, on others it seems like it's more about personal growth, but the lyrics about FaceTime and getting used to holding your significant other on a screen and not in person hit me the hardest initially. It was also really cool to see how the interludes played into the theme with the excerpts from mountain climbers that played at the end of each one. On Verglas, there's a clip at the end of a mountain climber talking about how mountain climbing can feel repetitive and monotonous and how it can be easy to sort of lose the direction you're going in. And that leads into Maybe Another Day, which reflects these exact same themes and ideas within Quad Eka's day-to-day -day life. On Hallstatt, there's a mountain climber talking about how he gets withdrawal symptoms if he isn't constantly climbing, and that leads into Work, which is a song about constantly working. It's a really nice touch on here, and as someone that loves albums with a strong, cohesive concept, that's going to keep me coming back to the album just as much as the impressive soundscapes will. I also really like how the end of the outro track loops back into the start of the intro track if you listen to the album like that. It kind of reminded me of Taboo by Denzel Curry, which did a similar thing to show the kind of cyclical nature of life. And I feel like it's a similar thing on this project, showing that no matter what, even after you reach the summit of your climb, there's always going to be another mountain that waits for you later down the line. It's a Sisyphean, Sisyphean, it's a Sisyphean, oh my fucking god, it's a Sisyphean climb, if that's even a word. Now, before I talk about my favourite and least favourite tracks, there is one more weak point for me personally that I want to touch on that, again, doesn't ruin the album for me, it's just something that I felt wasn't super necessary. The Features. They're all artists I like, IDK in particular, I love IDK's music, and he has great concept albums as well, but I feel like this project would run a lot more smoothly if no one else was on it. From Me To You just seems like such a personal project for Quad Echo. Like I said, he almost entirely produced it, he's showing an immense amount of artistic growth on it, and the concept of the album is pretty much about his personal growth and his claim. So with all that being considered, the features honestly felt more to me like interruptions on the album rather than enhancements to it. The actual performances of the features were mostly fine, but I just feel like I would prefer it if they weren't on here. Also, one small final nitpick, while I like the song itself, I feel like Where'd You Go is a song that feels a little bit out of place on From Me To You. I don't know if it was, but that's the one on this album that sounds like it was recorded the earliest on, out of all the other tracks. Like, it sounds like it was kind of at the start, from the transition over from voice memos to from me to you and as a result it just feels a little less polished and a bit more like Quad Echo's older music than all the other songs on here. The other single Alone Together really does feel like it fits in on here especially with the phenomenal new mix which adds some more glitchy elements to the instrumental and cleans it up a bit. That sounds incredible and Quad Echo did a great job at changing that from the single and making it sound phenomenal. But Where'd You Go just feels a bit strange strange for me personally within this project, even with its new mix. But when it comes to the criticisms, that's pretty much where they end for me. I love this album a lot, and it's one I'm going to be replaying for the foreseeable future, and it will absolutely hold me over until Quad Echo's next project. Favourite tracks on here were Sisyphus, Candles on Fire, Shades of Us, Smiling at the Ground, Alone Together, and It's All a Game, and 
honestly probably maybe another day as well and yeah i think that's it for my favorites as for least favorites on here there's only a couple and those are can't you see and work we gonna work until the trial i've been grinding all day on about the cash out quareka if you're watching this video Congratulations on the album release, and I'm sure you know that I'm far from the only person that feels like you absolutely smashed it out of the park on this one. The amount of work you put into it behind the scenes absolutely doesn't go unnoticed, and it is the best, most well-constructed collection of songs that you've put out yet. Crafting this album must have itself felt like a grueling mountain climbing expedition, but the end result is a phenomenal one. And that is why From Me To You is my album of the year so far. Thank you for watching.